Now it's been about nine months, 10 months when I reviewed the Mi Pad 4. Now this is still, even this far into 2019, my favorite small eight inch Android tablet. Now this isn't the original one that I had. The first one I had was the white version. It didn't have LTE. And I'm back here with a re-review and I have been using this tablet quite a lot and I'll just cover in this particular review here why after this long that this is still my favorite and why I'm going to be keeping this particular tablet here. Let's take a look at the build. So it's a very nice small side. We've got the rounded corners. It's an alloy back on here. Right up the top we have plastic. This is for the wireless antenna reception. And we've got a 13 megapixel camera on the rear and it does protrude as you can see a little bit. It sticks out about a millimeter. So it's not great, but uh, overall I think the build definitely quite decent on this tablet. Our SIM slot on the left hand side will take micro SD cards. Now I've tested up to 128 gigabytes without any issues. And we'll take a nano SIM here because I have the LTE version. Now this LTE version does lack LTE band 20. So if you need that in Europe, if you're somewhere in say Germany, then unfortunately it does not have it. It's got like the Chinese LTE bands with this one. Top left hand side, we do have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. So this is one of the tablets that does have it, which is good because those manufacturers dropping it. The output from it is very good. So it's just like Xiaomi's mobile phones. It's something they do very good. They're analog 3.5 millimeter out. It does support microphones. There's no static over the line either. And then along the bottom, we've got a type C port here that does not support video out. Unfortunately on this tablet, there is no HDMI out whatsoever ever. We have a microphone and then two loudspeakers which do sound quite good. Then up the top we have a 5 megapixel camera housed within this rather large top bezel. So both the top and bottom bezels they are not the smallest especially in 2019. Side bezels look okay but here are some samples now taken from that front and rear camera. So with the stock app you get 1080p and it does not have any electronic image stabilization overall. The quality is alright but uh, as I'll show you now if you use open camera you can at least get 4K footage. You can see that the difference is quite significant that the footage now is a lot sharper but still no electronic image stabilization. But it is a tablet after all so I think this is good enough. Now in direct sunlight even though we have quite a good maximum brightness it tops out about 600 lux is not so good in direct sunlight because it's an IPS panel. It's fully laminated. AMOLED panels tend to look a lot better in the sunlight or OLED I've found and you, you can kind of struggle to see it at the moment here. It looks a little bit in real life better than what I'm showing in this video but it's just not brilliant so you need to really know that for GPS use. If you plan to use this on a boat or in a car or something just be prepared to struggle at times if the sunlight's beating down onto it. So we can tweak with the the screen of course, your colors, your contrast. So it's on the automatic brightness contrast setting out of the box. And for most people that's gonna be perfectly fine. I prefer actually standard, which gets the white balance a lot more correct. And of course then you can tweak this if you wanted to. You said, oh, I, I want it a, more of a warm white, you want a cool. You can also adjust the, the scaling and the DPI. So it's gonna be scaling of the text, the font, the DPI, everything else. So if you don't like everything looking too small, it can make it a little bit larger. So with the second model here, of course, now I have LTE. Now there is no LTE band 20 for those that need it. So just bear that in mind that uh, you might not get good speeds. You might be stuck on only 3G, which could be a little bit unfortunate. But here in Spain, I'm not having any, any problems whatsoever with that. So I got it from Trading Chengen and they actually unlocked the bootloader and put a Xiaomi EU ROM on here. And I find in my experience that it's actually coming out to be better than Xiaomi's own ROM. We're still stuck on Android 8, unfortunately. So it's 8.1 and Android 9 ROM, the Android Pie ROM should be coming soon this month. It's apparently now that they're supposed to be bringing it out. Hopefully we're gonna see that. Of course, my version has the four gigabytes of RAM and you get 64 gigabytes of storage. And I'm on the latest beta from the Xiaomi.eu guys. And it's working fine. I'm finding the performance with the full screen gestures you can see I'm in and scrolling here is smoother and faster than Xiaomi's own ROM here. And they've removed a bit of the bloatware as well that used to get. Now we do have face unlocking still that is uh, working. So if some things I want to point out, so obviously Play Store is still on there. If you got the Chinese ROM, then you'd have to install that separately. That can be a bit of a hassle. So that's why I like the fact that it's got it included. 
And if you're really into your custom ROMs and things, with the unlocked bootloader, you can flash the Pixel Experience ROM, which is uh, really good. I may post another video of that one if people are interested. It's quite an interesting ROM. It's giving you, of course, as the name suggests, a Pixel Experience, and also has Google's camera with it. Now, you can run it with this, but you have to edit the build prop. So that's a little bit full on. So we don't have still wide vine level one cert, okay? That's one of the cons that I had with the original model that I first reviewed. So this means Netflix, Amazon Prime is gonna be stuck, unfortunately, in standard definition, uh, which is a little bit of a, a hassle here. Now YouTube, this can actually work with this particular ROM. When you go to your quality, you can run it right in 4K if you wanted to, and let's just test out how it does perform. So the spot number five was me on the other side, way away from the router, and the performance still managed to get over 100 megabits per second. So really, the wireless on this is actually... So no problems. It will run it. It will stream that fine. But here's the battery life. So over 10 hours, depending on what you're doing. So this was streaming Amazon Prime mostly, and about a good 70% on wireless. So if you're on data, then expect this to be around nine hours, a little less. But if you were doing light tasks and you're reading ebooks and things like that, then this tablet is really ideal for that. You can probably get even 11, maybe even 12 hours depending on your brightness, which is really good. Now the charge time too is close to three hours. So it's a little slow, even though the chipset supports it, we don't have Qualcomm's Quick Charge 3 support. So it just charges at the five volts, two amps, and that's why it's slow. And 2-2 score. No real change, even though I am on the Xiaomi.eu ROM, it feels faster and smoother, the optimization of the ROM, but it's not gonna increase your benchmark scores. Still good for the chipset. So GPS is working really well, no problems, and having the hardware compass really aids the fact uh, that at least it's gonna know where we're going, the direction we're heading, especially for Google Maps. So it knows we're heading north or east or whatever, it does aid the fact. This is my 4G speeds. So they're good, they're fine. Um, I haven't had any problems with the coverage. It seems to be just like my mobile phones, for me at least here in Spain, on LTE band one and three support, which I can run, but it doesn't have band 20, just remember that. Wireless, really good, very fast. This is impressive. And also is the signal strength and range seems to be really good. I go over the other side of the apartment and I don't run into uh, any problems there with that whatsoever. So you can see when you're scrolling around, I will bring up uh, Twitter because that's one thing that can be a little bit laggy. So just refresh that and you can see that, yeah, it does get a little slow at times because it's got a lot of things that needs to lower. And the scrolling there seems good. And as mentioned that the, the touch response and the accuracy I'm not having any issues. It seems to be good with the Xiaomi.eu ROM. So we'll take a look now at gaming performance. We're just gonna clear everything out here. So that RAM, normally you get about uh, 2.4 gigabytes. You can see I own the moment 2.1 free. So I have it set on the extreme frame rate option, which is 60 frames per second and HD. I had to use GFX tool to get the setting. And being such a small tablet, it's very easy to get to the controls I find with your thumbs and a lot more comfortable. Frame rate is keeping up. I mean, it's not a continual 60 frames per second the whole time. You can clearly see some frame dips. I just try not to die straight away. And you can see no real lag here. It is very smooth and fluid. And this game, which is Shadowgun Legends on the 60 frames per second setting on the low settings runs really well, even though it's really quite demanding, the Snapdragon 660 still handles this fine. One other thing due to its size as well, the fact you can hold it with one hand and it's just so light and portable is eBooks and PDF files and things like that. So you can see here, looks great on the screen and really ideal for this kind of use. Hopefully it will have Android Pie soon. So that's Android 9. That should be coming from Xiaomi maybe this month or next month. And the Xiaomi.eu ROM, which I do recommend because we're getting none of the, uh, the bloatware. They've removed most of the bloat. It seems to be well optimized and touch response as mentioned, a little bit better and feels just a little bit quicker and snappier. So you can get up to and even over 10 hours of battery life from this, which is really good. It takes almost three hours to fully charge. So it's a little on the slow side. Excellent 3.5 millimeter headphone jack quality, no HDMI out on this is one of the cons, no wide vine level one cert. And of course, if you do get the official accessories, this is one I do recommend. 
Weighs about 100 grams. It's the official flip case. You can get it in different colors as well. So you simply just uh, slot the tablet into it and it does offer quite a good protection. So the whole back is now a matte back on here and we have a very nice uh, soft finish, like a fake leather on the front of it. So this flips around when you open it up, it does unlock and lock it as you can see. And it does act as a stand as well, this case. So thanks a lot for watching this follow-up review nine, 10 months later with the Mi Pad 4. Still a great little tablet. And do watch my full detailed review if you want a little bit more info on this particular model here. Thanks for watching.